G'day and welcome back Grifters to another installment of the Dora Project. The video you're now watching is the second part of our custom live world build. We'll be covering a lot of ground today. In this 385 Quintrex Explorer, we'll be installing three separate pumps to make a feature rich live well system. The main live well pump, a pump to recirculate the live well water, and a bilge pump in case we don't do a good job. Amongst that, we'll be showing the basic considerations for the plumbing and the electrical wiring. All of this follows on from the making of the custom aluminium tank that now sits in the middle of our forward casting deck. It's going to get a little technical and we have heaps to cover, so let's get started. For Dora, the process started with the installation of a bilge pump. For those that don't know, a bilge pump is designed to pump water that is entered into the vessel, out of the vessel. Think of it as a, an automatic bailing bucket. To maximise the effectiveness of a bilge, it should be placed at the lowest part of the vessel, generally at the stern, so it can remove as much water as possible. The pump is connected to a hose that's routed to an outlet which sits well above the waterline. Now with a fully covered floor and deck, it's a legal requirement for the vessel to have a bilge pump. Not to mention, we'll be drilling particularly large holes into the hull that sit underneath the waterline, which bodes as a scary thought if our sealing efforts aren't very good. For this, I've opted for an automatic bilge pump. For me, I had to make some space under my rear deck to place the pump against the floor, and then fed the hose up the transom, behind the deck, and into a through hull fitting. Very simple, but very effective. This particular bilge can detect when water is present and will turn on, as well as having a manual operated switch. I'll cover that off when we wire up the other pumps. With the safety component out of the way, we'll move into the bigger stuff, the live well. For this live well, I'm going a little beyond what is necessary by including two separate pump circuits. The normal live well setup, which pumps fresh external water into the tank, and a recirculation system that aerates water that is already within the tank. Both systems are controlled by their own individual pumps, and have their own aerated outlets into the tank. The live well intake pump pulls water from the transom of the boat, through a hose, and into an aerator nozzle. Before the tank can overflow, water reaches an outlet standpipe and gravity drains to the back of the boat. Whereas the recirculation pump picks up water from the bottom of the tank and re-pumps it back into the top of the tank, passing through an aerator nozzle as well. Not only can the recirculation pump aerate old water, it can also pump the water out of the tank if needed to. This can be beneficial if the water becomes dirty, like with squid ink, or if I wanted to quickly refresh the whole system and I can pump old water out while pumping new water in. Even more excitingly, with the aerator nozzle I've chosen, I can even use it as a poor man's deck wash. I started the process by installing the plumbing fittings that mount to the bottom of the tank, the drainage standpipe and the recirculation pickup. A step drill makes light work of the 25mm holes, but the outlet requires a larger 30mm hole. Drilling and test fitting of the plumbing was much easier with the tank removed from the casting deck. This system is definitely tight and cramped within Dora's casting deck and I'm not sure how easy the process would have been if the deck wasn't modular. Next up was the placement of the aerator nozzles for both the inlet and the recirculation system. This required a little more precision as I wanted to ensure maximum height of the inlets as well as not interfere with the framing of the casting deck. I'm going to guess this next bit might be a little contentious. I had racked my brain for an elegant solution to mount the recirculation pump. After a lot of deliberation, I mounted it to the outside corner of the live well. 
I tried my hardest to mount it underneath the tank, but there simply wasn't enough room. To mount the pump, I fabricated and welded a small bracket to the outside. And using the through hull fitting, I could fasten it all together. In this position, the pump is always primed, even with minimal water in the system, whilst also meaning I can drain the full capacity of the tank. But I suppose just as a little side note, I think my welding is slowly getting better. Anyway, with the live well still out of the boat, I could quickly piece together the full recirculation system, cutting the hoses to the correct length, as well as fixing the fittings to the tank using Marine Sikaflex. I suppose I should mention that I'm using quick lock fittings to connect the hoses to the plumbing components. The quick lock system is great as you can very easily disconnect and reconnect without the need of any tools. This is particularly helpful if you need to troubleshoot the system whilst out on the water. With the test fit out of the way, all the components needed to be removed so the tank could be reinstalled for the last time. Without the life well plumbed in, a few bucketfuls of water and the system is ready to test. Connecting the pump directly to a 12 volt cordless battery and the recirculation system is working. From this position, you can see that the water is being picked up from the bottom of the tank, recirculated up, around and out the aerator nozzle. What's cool is, when I pull this aerated nozzle, the water is redirected and shot through a different outlet. Alrighty, with the recirculation system done, let's pump some water into the tank. Now I need to apologise as I didn't do the best job of filming the process, but I'll do my best to explain what's going on. For this part of the system, I'm using an 800 gallon per hour live well pump. This is a fairly large pump and finding space for it under the rear deck was a challenge. My only choice was to position it on the outermost port side corner. This allowed the pump to sit away from the casting deck frame. Though I would have loved for it to sit lower in the water, it was still below the resting waterline. You may have noticed I had pre-routed some hose from the live well to the transom. There are two hoses, a large 30mm hose for the drainage water and a smaller 25mm hose for the inlet. Whilst the drainage hose remained in position, I inevitably changed the routing of the inlet hose to run underneath the gunnel. This is for a few reasons. Firstly, the line is more manageable and easier to monitor when it's underneath the gunnel. Secondly, and more importantly, when routing underneath the floor, the system would develop an airlock which would prevent the pump from working. It's an honest mistake, but one that can be avoidable. I think some of the information available to understanding live well airlock is pretty poor, so I'll give it a shot now. Firstly, it needs to be understood that the pump impeller must be submerged in water to be able to push water through the hose. These pumps cannot push air through a line. This is important to remember because airlock, as the name suggests, is air trapped or locked within the hose. When the boat is underway and on the plane, water can effectively be sucked out of the inlet hose, allowing air to fill the void. When the boat comes to rest again, water would usually fill the void as long as there is no obstruction in the line for the air to escape. But if there is a small dip within the line where water can settle, the air cannot push past and has nowhere to escape to. This is generally how a live well airlock is formed. So in essence, the best way to avoid an airlock is to make sure the hose is always travelling upwards so any air can pass through the system uninterrupted. With all that said and done, unfortunately for me and Dora, I cannot feasibly think of a way to route the inlet hose without introducing a dip within the line. Thankfully though, I've positioned it so I can manipulate the hose so I can get rid of the water and the airlock if I need to. I'm trying to work on a little custom solution to get around this, but for now this will have to do.
as you would expect, the drainage hose also needs an outlet, and this is gravity assisted, so this needs a gradual decline for water to be let out. I placed the outlet in the crook of the floor, which provided enough room for the fittings to slip underneath the aluminium frame. The hoses were all connected using the same quick lock connections and the fittings sealed with marine Zikaflex. And that somewhat sums up Dora's plumbing of the live well. Let's talk about the rough basics of wiring up these pumps. Please be aware though, I am not an electrician. Please seek professional advice when wiring up your own boat. So, there's the automatic bilge pump and then the live well pumps, and they are both a little different. Let's knock over the automatic bilge. Unlike the other pump, the automatic bilge has three wires coming out of it. A black wire, a brown wire, and a brown wire with white stripes. As you've likely guessed, the black is for the ground. The brown wire provides power to automate the unit, and the brown with white stripes is to provide power to manually operate the pump. The black cable is connected to the negative terminal of your battery, or a negative bus bar. To allow the system to automatically turn on when it detects water, the brown wire is connected to the positive terminal of the 12 volt system, but not before installing an inline fuse that suits the specific build unit. I have also decided to have a manual switch, and to power this, I have routed the brown wire to my fuse block and into the switch panel. This way, if the automatic function is not working, I can manually turn the pump on to remove water. I've had to remove my old switch panel and I've opted for some new fancy stainless switches. Unfortunately, I can't go through that process in this video, but there's enough love in the comments, I'll try and piece something together in the future. The live well and the recirculation pump are arguably much simpler than the automatic bilge. There are two wires, a black and a brown. Again, the black goes to ground, with the brown being for power. To oversimplify it, the black wire is connected to a ground connection, either a negative bus bar or the negative terminal of your battery. Like the bilge pump, the brown wire goes to a positive terminal with the inclusion of a switch of your choice and a fuse specific to your pump. I know that's a little oversimplified, but to explain how it goes into Dora's 12 volt system is its own video. I'll try to explain the basics of it really quickly. Dora's 12 volt system is comprised of a 12 volt battery, a fuse block, switch panel and isolator. A power cable is fed directly from the 12 volt battery to the fuse block with an isolator switch in between. From the fuse block, power is diverted to the switches and from the switches into the accessories. The grounding of the accessories goes to the bus bar built into the fuse block and that's grounded back to the battery. Going through it in detail is probably best for a new video. So if you'd like to see it, please let me know. Okay, so now everything is all wired up and we're done, right? Well, you can certainly stop there, but I wanted to include a baffle divider in my live well. What looks like a simple divider is actually very important. The baffle is used to slow the movement of water when sloshing from side to side. Without a baffle, water can move freely across the long length of the tank, which can cause leaking, or worse, could cause the tank to split. By creating a divider with large holes through the centre, the water can still pass through it, but cannot build too much momentum so it can damage the system. Well guys, I think that finally sums up the process. It's been information overload, so thanks for sticking with me. I'll share the rough costs with you in just a second, but as usual, I like to ask a favour. These videos take a lot of effort to create, so if you've enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up as it's a massive help. There are heaps more Dora Project videos in the pipeline, no pun intended, so if you're interested, go ahead and subscribe. Alright guys, as promised, back to the cost. 
I'm gonna rattle these off really quickly. Flowrite live well kit, 150 bucks. 800 gallon per hour live well pump, $110. A long aerator nozzle, $25. Pump out aerator nozzle, 40 bucks. Hoses, roughly 75 bucks. Stainless hose clamps, 50 bucks. Automatic bilge pump, 150 bucks. Sikaflex, 25 bucks. A handful of extra fittings, 40 bucks. And general wiring and electrical pieces, 20 bucks. This comes in at roughly $685, which doesn't include the cost of the aluminium tank. All that said and done though, this is the whole kit and caboodle. A basic live well without bilge and recirculation would come in at a guess 300 bucks if you had a tank handy. And that's it lads, I hope this helps. It's been a great little project, but we've got loads more to do. And on that note, we look forward to seeing you in the next Dora project video on the Griftco channel. See ya.